Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com, GamblersAdvisory.com. Let's talk about the Paul Manafort case, right? They just had the opening statements. They were a bit shocking to me. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Paul Manafort, in my opinion, is in big trouble. Bigger trouble than I envisioned. I thought his defense would be more substantial. In an opening statement, the defense hints at where it's going to go, right? They give you the foundation for their defense. As a juror, as you're hearing the prosecution go first, you're thinking to yourself, well, how are they going to deal with the defense that the defense attorneys hinted at in their opening statement? So as you can imagine, I was paying close attention to the first day of this trial. Now let's give a little bit of background and let's talk about why Paul Manafort, in my opinion, one man's opinion, likely gets convicted of at least some of the 18 counts against him. Now the prosecution contends that Manafort received millions of dollars, right, over 18 million dollars. Not an inconsequential amount, right? The kind of amount that the prosecution can actually trace. An amount big enough where people are going to understand that it needed to be reported. Manafit receives more than 18 million dollars from the Ukraine from 2006 to 2015. Now that's important, folks. It's a nine-year period of time. This is not a quick transaction where people were sloppy, people were negligent, and failed to dot the I's and cross the T's in fulfilling the reporting requirements. No, this is a pattern of behavior over seven, excuse me, several years, right? Nine years. Now, the prosecution contends that Manafort tried to hide this money in unreported offshore bank accounts and companies. The prosecution also claims that he did not disclose this money as required on his United States tax returns. The prosecution further argues that the receipt of this money for work he did on behalf of the Ukrainian government and Ukrainian politicians required him legally to register as a foreign agent with the United States government. He did not. Finally, the prosecution contends, and we're summarizing the charges here, it's a 31-page indictment that's available online. I encourage everyone to read it. The prosecution contends that Manafort then spent the money on real estate and goods here in the United States. And in financing these purchases, he made misstatements to banks thereby committing bank fraud, right? So as you can imagine, my expectation, given the seriousness of these charges, was that Manafort's defense would have major ammunition. That they would argue that no, he didn't receive $18 million from the Ukraine. Right? I thought they were going to try to argue that, hey, he hired attorneys to register as a foreign agent with the United States government. And I thought they were going to hint at having major documents, right? A retainer agreement or some correspondence between Manafort and, you know, some representative 
who was delegated the task of registering with the United States government, right? I thought Manafort would even go further and say, look, you guys are mistaking my appearance of wealth for actual wealth. I didn't receive all this money. In fact, I had to finance my lifestyle, right? The expensive clothes, the premier real estate that the prosecution believes that I bought with foreign money was actually financed through these loans, through these gifts, through these donations from third parties, right? In my opinion, that would be the only way that Manafort would be able to beat the 18 counts short of a presidential pardon. Well, understand, Manafort's defense included none of that. Right? His argument is one of intent, which in my opinion is an incredibly weak defense, especially since in a criminal trial there is a chance that the defendant might not take the stand. Right Again, we're talking about more than $18 million. So in their opening statement, the defense basically said that Manafort did not willfully lie to the IRS. Now let's understand what that means. It implies that there were lies and falsehoods in the tax return submitted on his behalf. You know, if I say to you, look, I didn't willfully lie. I believe it means that what I told you is incorrect. That what I told you was a lie, it just wasn't a willful one. Right? Let me also say, too, that there was no attempt by the defense in their opening to argue that the tax returns were accurate. Right? In other words, if you're going to show your good faith, if your defense is, hey, I, I meant well, I didn't intentionally do anything wrong, you would think they would at least explain where you made your mistake, right? how your tax return could have been wrong because you made certain assumptions in your attempt to create proper tax return. In other words, hey, I thought I could write off this portion, or I thought I could characterize this income this way, and that's why it's listed that way on my tax return. Folks, there's, there's nothing like that. Now understand, the prosecution has a star witness. He happens to be Manafort's longtime business partner, Rick Gates. Right? Manafort, of course, is blaming Rick Gates for the failure to register and for the inaccurate tax returns. Now, that might work if this were a short term deal. Again, a one-off. I do an assignment for the Ukrainian government or some prominent Ukrainian politician. I delegate reporting requirements to an associate, and that associate makes a mistake. But how do you explain the failure to disclose the income in tax returns when we're talking about a nine-year period of time? At what point does the I meant well. I didn't intentionally lie. I didn't know defense. Start to lose credibility. What, after one year of false tax returns and the failure to register? After two years, three years, four years, five years? Isn't there some point during a nine-year period of time when we expect a guy to figure out that his tax returns contain lies that he hasn't registered with the United States government 
and that he hasn't disclosed his offshore bank accounts. So let's just say, for all you've read and heard, and for all the high-powered attorneys Paul Manafort has hired, folks, his defense is awful, in my opinion. Right? Unless they destroy Rick Gates on the stand and Rick Gates then says, I was the mastermind for nine years. Right? Think about that. Nine years. Unless they elicit simply incredible testimony like that. Unless it's a Perry Mason moment where some witness says, okay, I'm the one. I'm the one who should be on trial. In my opinion, Paul Manafort is toast. In my opinion, and we'll see what happens. Today is Wednesday, August 1st. The trial has just started. But in my opinion, Paul Manafort's defense seems to be more geared toward public relations than an actual defense. Understand how serious the charges are, folks. Money laundering. Right? Getting money, then running it through offshore bank accounts that aren't reported and companies. Money laundering carries a 20-year jail sentence. Right? Think about it. This guy, who's older, could well receive the type of sentence that leaves him in prison for the rest of his life, absent a presidential pardon. Right? Because we're also dealing with more than $18 million and several years of unreported income, politically it's going to be very hard to grant a presidential pardon here. Right? Food for thought. So just know to this observer, and I'm sure there are going to be many with differing opinions. Paul Manafort is in the fight of his life. Right? His opening statement did not impress me. His defense, which really hinges on his lack of intent and his lack of knowledge over a nine-year period of time, just doesn't pass the smell test to me. In other words, if his business partner takes the stand. Business partners already cut a deal with the prosecution. If his business partner takes the stand and says, look, you know, Manafort and I discussed these transactions. We knew these offshore bank accounts had not been disclosed to the United States government. We knew that our tax returns didn't fully report our income, right? Manafort knew this early. He certainly knew this by year four or five. In my opinion, that testimony is going to sound credible to me. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.